Hello, my name is Vic Bubble, and I sometimes go by the name of Simon, and welcome to a thoughts video. This time I'm going to be talking less about a game in particular, and more just about my general thoughts on mainly my behavior. Um, this is a video all about being a snob. It's something I've kind of come to terms with over the few years I've been playing board games, and it's kind of started out from being not that apparent, and then starting to grow over the years, especially this year has been quite bad. What I mean by this is essentially that I look at a game and I kind of turn my nose up at it sometimes. Generally because I played it and I think it's not actually that good or it just might be that I think it is a bit trashy, if anything else. So, let me start. I play a lot of games. I have a weekly group that meets up and we typically focus on nice, well-designed, meaty Euro games and sometimes some tasty American trash stuff. That's been happening for about two years now. I also go to monthly board game events to play there. And occasionally I'll meet up with other friends and try to get them to play. What I'm discovering more, especially when I go to the events, is a lot of times people ask me, hey, do you want to play something? And I'll be like, um, I'm kind of busy. I, uh, uh, and I'll try and avoid it. Mostly because I've known the game. I've maybe not played it, but I kind of know it's probably not the game for me. This also kind of stands into a lot of my thoughts in general, which are generally quite positive. I generally like a lot of games out there because they are quite nice and fun games. However, occasionally there's a game that I think just has a nagging issue, which is why I dislike it so intently. Um, I think there's only one game I truly hate, uh, and that is Warhammer 40k, the tabletop game. Everything else I've kind of extremely disliked. Um, there's a couple of games I will say it's average, and when they say they're average, it generally means I'm happy to play them, but it really depends on the group of people I'm playing with. So for example, a game I generally dislike is Fury of Dracula, and then a game I think I'm kind of mediocre on is something like Quadropolis. Quadropolis is a very nice game from Arcane Wonders, not Arcane Wonders, Days of Wonders, but it just doesn't have that really punchy feeling for me, which kind of makes it fun to play. I think it works best with, as a family game, um, and that's why it's still in my collection, to play with my family. Fury of Dracula, I've played it once, and I think I hated every single moment of it. Doesn't mean I hate the game entirely, it just means I don't want to ever experience something like that again. This also means, a lot of times when I play a game, I also compare it to other games. So, for example, Fury of Dracula is a hidden movement game where you're moving on the board trying to hunt down Dracula as hunters. Very simple. One person will play Dracula, the rest will play hunters. This is fine, except for I kind of just prefer something like Scotland Yard, which is a game that came out in, what, early 2000? And that game is you trying to hunt down Mr. X as detectives. The big difference being that where Fury of Dracula takes three hours, Scotland Yard only takes not even 40 minutes. And that's quite important, especially because what's going to happen in Scotland Yard is you're going to become the bad guy, they're going to hunt you down, and they might succeed or they might fail, and then someone else gets to be the bad guy, and then they can have, or they can at least experience what you just experienced. And that's a lot of fun. Fear of Dracula has a lot more issues than this that, but it is a very long game. So that's one of the things. I've just compared two games together, and it's basically, well, why would I ever want to play Fear of Dracula, since none of the, the stuff works for me, when something like Scotland Yard is just, just better, essentially. Another example is Viticulture. I don't think... St Stonemaier Games does okay-ish games, but they never really stand out for me. And Viticulture is a game that generally, it's okay. It has a decent work replacement element of building wine fields and growing wines and turning them into paste and then turning them into actual wine and then selling that wine. And it's all fine and dandy. There's a nice bidding system if bit lackluster if anything. My biggest complaint is that the card system in Viticulture is horrible. It is probably the worst thing I've seen in a long time and it's mainly just because of balancing issues. For example, I played a game where I mostly drew cards which gave me white wine to, to make in my vineyards and then all the cards that allow me to fulfill um, basically to supply wine was all red cards 
which meant I basically had to try and supply red wine. The only trouble is I wasn't drawing any vines that could produce red wine. So for round in, my friends are all happily giving away their wine, getting money for it, getting victory points, and here's me still spending my actions to try and destroy those vine cards. Another issue is that some of the cards are just better than others, and it's just down to luck if to see if you draw them or not, because there's no mitigation ready. There are cards that let you take cards from other people's hands, but it's generally their choice to give you those cards, and you'll probably just end up bad cards that they want to get rid of. So that doesn't help you. And then you have cards which are just better. One card will be like, okay, build, build, take a construction action and build a building. If this is your sixth building, you gain two victory points. That seems okay. That seems like, okay, maybe I want to focus on buildings. That seems great. And then another card will just be choose two, two of the three things, which will be gain two bucks, two victory points, and two cards. That's just better. That's just straight up better. And it honestly broke the game for me. I was just like, why am I playing this? When, again, I could play something like Vinhost, which is a fantastic game all about making wine. It has so much flavor to it. It has wine experts who want various types of wines. It has wonderful wine regions. Everything about the game is just so much more smoother, so much more thematically enriching. It's just the better game for me. So... I kind of am a snob because what I'll see is I'll look at other people's going, oh, Viticulture, that's a good game. I love it. It's fantastic. And then here's me going, is it really? It's ugh, peasant. I say that. I'm happy when people play a game. I'm happy when people play games. That's great. It's just I kind of wish they were playing better ones. It's kind of like the feeling of watching a person play Monopoly. You kind of know there are better games out there. So this kind of breaks your heart a bit. Getting back to Fury of Dracula, there's so much wrong with that game. There is, firstly, this, the movement system, which takes forever to get anywhere. The map is huge. You then have, basically, the problem that it takes forever to do anything. So, for a three-hour game, you have exciting moments, maybe three or four times during the game. And this all comes down to a deck of cards, again, which you can basically have no control over. You're either going to get lucky, or you're going to get completely screwed over. And the person... Just playing Dracula has far too much power, really. One of my biggest complaints is that they kind of added a combat system to what well, simply is a hidden movement game. And so what happens is you can find Dracula, great, and then two turns during combat he'll just escape into a bat and fly somewhere. And you'll have no idea where he is, which just kind of sucks. Or there'll be a situation where all four of your detectives or all four of your vampire hunters have managed to find him and trap him and get him into one location and he all go into combat. The big trouble there is Dracula only engages with one person, which means, yeah, while the other people are doing damage, you're the one that's trying to block all of Dracula's special abilities, which again means three rounds, three rounds in, Dracula turns to mist and flies off, even though your one friend managed to bring holy water and he used it on that turn, but because he wasn't the engaged person with Dracula, it didn't cancel his ability. That's just bullshit. Excuse my language, but that is honestly the worst thing I can think of. You spend three hours and you're telling me that as a team, we couldn't stop Dracula because of a rule like that. That is, I think honestly the most horrendous thing I've seen in a very long time when it comes to board games. But yeah, that's generally why. So people play Fury of Dracula, great. It's just, if anyone ever asks me to play that, I will honestly just say never, never again. And I've also become a lot more, just in general, I've become a lot more cautious of games. Even in my Gen Con and my Essen reviews, or top 10s, those have been games that I've kind of looked at, thought, this is really cool, this like might be really, really fun. And then you kind of see the reviews later on, and it's like, okay, so I don't really need to add it to my collection. And I think that's also one of the big things, is that now I'm almost three years into playing board games, I have a collection of games. I have, I think, almost a hundred games. I think it's about 80 at the moment. But rarely does a game come along and I'm like, oh God, I have to add this to my collection. There's a very short list this year for games that I want to add to my collection. Generally, it was the expansion stuff. So expansions for Island of the Sky, for Five Tribes, generally expansions were what I'm going for because that gives me more of the game I like. Really, when I think about it, 
I don't want to be a bad person. I want to like a lot of games. I generally want to be like, okay, I'm happy to try a game for the first time. It's just I'm finding more and more often, if something even small ticks me off, I generally will go very much off a game quite fast. Power Grid is another example of a game that got me feeling like that. Thankfully, I've kind of settled down a bit more. But Power Grid was a really good game. You kind of build these Power Grids via an auction system, and you kind of supply them supply them with fuel and then you generate money which can be used in the auction to expand your empire more and that's great it just at the end of the game it comes down to you having to have 16 generators powered but in order to do that you can only have a, like three fives or two fives and a six power generator so it's very restrictive as to what generators you can get and you might just end up getting to effect where you have one seven one four and a three and that's simply not enough to power all your buildings and some guy managed to get the five the five and the six to power all of his and it just doesn't kind of feel right it feels like you've been playing the whole game for nothing if anything and played it again but more this time i'm now a bit more happy with the game i still don't like the ending but i'm not going to say no to a game like that but it's something like that it's something like a small rules debacle that could really throw me off a game so i think really you need to have a game that's both solid in terms of its mechanical design but also a game now needs to stand out one of the big reasons why i loved alchemist uh, for my last thoughts video was because it has such a unique app one of the reasons why i hate warhammer 40k is because it's been using the same system for eight editions now and that system is still broken that system is still bad it's still boring as all hell and it still takes forever to play so I think I, this fourth video was mainly just me gaining out my thoughts of what I think makes me go off a game. I hope it's giving you some insight into kind of the personality that I have for board gaming. And I would like to hear your thoughts. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think Fury of Dracula is a fantastic game. Maybe you love that combat system. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to interact with you. So please leave a comment. And of course, if you want to see more videos, remember to hit subscribe and to like this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.